Okay, who knows if this is right side up or sideways. We're going to have to stay with it because I hadn't touched anything, but Facebook has told me to change things. Trying to make sure I've got the whole piece in there or at least close to it. I, would, I think this is French Provincial style, but what this actually is is... Um, well, who knows what it is it somebody gave it to me but you know those um pieces that are i can't squat so doing my best here y'all um you know those pieces that have such a slick finish on them like you buy them at the furniture store or whatever and they have such a slick finish on them you probably never have to to polish those things you know what i mean you could just blow the dust off of it and that's all it takes well, this had that kind of finish on it. So even though with the uh, chalky style paints, like the Dixie Belle I'm fixing to use, uh, stick to anything, they say, the surface on this kind of furniture, I mean, it's like glass-like. And I was afraid if I didn't put a primer on here that I, I would end up with some of the paint coming off later on. And uh, so I did and then I was afraid I'd only have this little jar of the cobalt blue that I'm going to use today and I really wanted a, a darker color underneath which I didn't have here with me at home and I just wanted to paint today so I took some slick stick which is the uh, Dixie Bell product that's like a primer that you put on man I've got it on my finger now that you put on uh, slick surfaces to you know give them a little bit of a grit and grip so that you can paint them without having any issues and and white is harder to cover actually than black and darker colors so when you're doing a primer that's why they sell like the rust colored ones before they paint cars and they sell the light gray medium gray and dark gray ones at the like Sherwin Williams or wherever for when you're painting your walls because depending on what the tint of your paint is going to be that you put over it it matters with your uh with your primer so if you're going to do say a deep tone of paint that's relatively deep and you put it over a light gray or a white surface it's going to take coat after coat after coat of that to get a good uh to get a good thick coat of your paint so i wanted i knew i wanted to tint it and I only had that much blue, so I had this purpley color, which is called aubergine, or which means eggplant. Uh, so I mixed some of that with the slick stick, and this is the color that it came out, and I almost decided to mix that paint color because I liked it so much. But anyways, I intended on doing this in this uh, bright cobalt blue. It's almost a, a royal blue, but they call it cobalt blue. And then I'm gonna use some black wax over it, some Dixie Belle black wax. But I wanted to show you, I, uh, I cleaned this whole thing first with, I didn't have the Dixie Belle white lightning at home, but I did have some TSP, which is what mainly uh, is in the Dixie Belle white lightning anyways. If you need a link to that or info on it, just let me know and I'll give it to you. But I cleaned the whole thing and then I rinsed that off. Then I mixed my primer in a red Dixie cup and, and put that on it. And this is what the hardware looks like y'all <laughs> it's not gonna be easy for me to get up i'm gonna hold it from way out here uh that's what the hardware looks like and i'm gonna spray paint it black i do believe so i'm you know you could paint leave it on there and paint over it all kinds of girls do that and uh but with this style of furniture and with what i'm seeing in my mind in the long run that's not what i want i'm wanting it to be darker around the edges a little bit and mostly still stay this color blue so the black will be on there in the wax and i think the black hardware will look good for the finish that i'm wanting so i'm gonna grab myself a handful of brushes here and see which one i want to use i don't even know if this is this has probably never even been opened I've not used this color before, but I've wanted to. I got one of those little stools like you, like I'm too short, so I have to step on that to get my spices out of the cabinet in the kitchen. And then I got a towel folded on that because I don't think I could just move. If I, if I get on the ground, I'm gonna be laying down there. And it is not easy for me to get up and down. Okay, that is a very, bright color 
Y'all just, I don't want to get paint on my West Virginia shirt, but I don't know where, what I did with, uh, I didn't bring any water. I don't know what I did with uh, my apron. So this is what we're going to do. I think I'm going to use this uh, Dixie Bell FL brush. So I appreciate whoever wants to hang with me while I do this today. Not going to be a whole lot of excitement going on here, but we can chat. That's for sure. You know, sometimes I think I'm, I'm not really teaching a, a new technique or anything here. I'm wetting my brush down a little bit with my spray bottle because I don't have any water in here. Uh, I do have some tea, sweetened with honey. But I do sometimes think if, if you're new to painting and you're just somebody who has a piece of furniture like this in your house and you want to try your hand at something, then... Uh, you're not always wanting to learn a really cool technique or or a different way of doing something. You're just wanting to see somebody plain old change the color or something and make it look good without having to do any fancy blending and, and other kind of things on there. You just want to see somebody else paint one regular and then after you, you know, painted a, a piece or two regular, then you may want to try some blending and some other techniques. So that's why I decided to come on and share this today, just a simple, uh, a simple piece and regular painting and just hang out because I I just wanted this piece to I just wanted to use this blue paint to tell you the truth. So don't laugh, I'm gonna try to stand up and see if I can get behind it to paint that back part. I haven't tried painting from that little stool yet. I have a one of those rolling stools at work and I use this that occasionally. I'm gonna be way back here for a second while I put this uh the blue on the top. But I want to get this done first. Yeah, buddy, this is a bright blue. Thing is, though, after I wax it and get the um, black wax on, it's really going to tone it down. And I really think it's going to be pretty. And if it's not, you know what? It's paint. We'll change it. I'm just going to mist this a little bit with my Mr. Bottle. Because I didn't have as much um, water in my brush as I'm used to. <laughs> now I have too much on top. That's okay. This uh, Dixie Belle is is a good thick paint anyway, so I'm gonna I'm trying to just sop up some of this water and get it off now, since I sprayed too much on there. I don't want any runs, so. But anyways, in, in the in the beginning of of whenever I was painting. I started out just painting, you know, just painting furniture just like this. And then I wanted to make my own glazes and things like that to get darker areas and things like I'll do with the wax on this later to highlight and low light and all that kind of stuff. And then I wanted to start doing more uh, shading and blending and all that. So sometimes I think it's good to just go back to the basics and talk about grabbing a piece of furniture that you have at home and not being afraid to just grab your paint and go at it. And, and make a bold color choice. I mean, you know, unless you're wherever, whatever football team has this color, it's probably not the first color that a lot of people would choose but I know that when we add the dark wax later it will totally change the look of it still having to make up for putting too much water on here in the beginning so that's why I'm kind of going back and forth over it so much. I'm so excited that you know to a furniture painter like me the you know, the holy grail is when you get to find a 
nice, you know, antique buffet or beautiful armoire or something like that to paint. And I've had some of those from before I was a furniture painter that I sold for very cheap. Kicking myself now that used to be in our wellness center and spa in the Ritter. But anyway, I found, and usually whenever I see any on Marketplace or anything like that, they're definitely, um, you know, higher priced than what I can afford if I'm going to paint it and try to, you know, sell it to get my money back after having my way with it. But anyway, I found a, a couple and they were more than I would usually spend. But I really just wanted them. I don't know, and couldn't make up my mind between them. And oddly enough, that my husband was like, well, what, you know, why don't you contact the lady and ask what she'll take for both of them? And I'm like, yeah, right, you know. And she gave me what, you know, $450 for both of them is what she's charging. And I'm like, you know what, I could probably do that if I then I'm going to put, you know, several hours and lots of paint into, you know, onto it as well to, I'm going to move that out of the way and try to just squat on the floor. Uh, and I'm very excited that we're going to go get them tomorrow. So that's a, something that excites me very much. And I'm so thankful that he's being supportive like that because it's hard to, now I'm going to sit back on the stool again, it's hard to explain to your husband why you want to buy so dang much furniture and to be able to get a couple of pieces that aren't tore up you know and have to spend half of eternity down in his workshop before i get to work on them that's probably why he was so thrilled about those two is he thought they would take keep me busy for a while and he wasn't gonna have to do nothing to them because <laughs> i have a lot of half finished projects down there and i have actually quite a few projects on my work table at work but they're buffets and there's just not very often that you get to do that. I'm gonna end up putting a second coat here, but I wanna make sure and cover all of the primer and these crevices and things real good the first time. I'm gonna push these drawers all the way in now. And uh, paint everything that I can see with these drawers closed. Um, and then I'll come back later, pull the drawers out and get these top edges and stuff that would stick if I messed with them right now. Okay, back off the stool again. Let's see if I can get myself down here. Again, make sure and get up under this edge. If I didn't know about that black wax, I'd be starting to doubt myself right now with this blue. You know, a lot of people paint with their pieces up on a table. That's what men do. Most of the men that I know anyways will paint with their pieces up on a table so you're not have to be crawling around on the floor trying to get this done. And I have a table that I work on at work, but here at home, I mean, I'm in the end of my, edge of my living room and not wanting to bring tables and everything else in here. I just wanted to paint a little bit. And I can see that there's a comment up there, but I can't get near it. Let's see if I can get it here and that way I can read the comments as I go. I appreciate y'all hanging with me. Oh, where did that, I thought it was just up. Oh, there I am. Sideways, of course. Oh, you did get that color, Amy, I like it. Hey, Kay. This is, uh, 
I, I was thinking about you and Teresa K actually about this painting because I know both of y'all are wanting to paint a little bit of bedroom furniture and a little bit nervous about it and I was thinking this is a you know a great way to just let y'all see that you could just start out like this and not have to be all nervous about it and feel confident in your painting abilities. And Amy, I'm glad that you got this paint color too because it, I usually don't do too much bright stuff. And I usually, here I, I would not actually go out in public. I would not go to the dollar store if I was starving. That's a mile down the road in this outfit. And here I am live on the internet wearing a pair of leggings that I usually put on a house coat before I walk in front of my husband with it on. The things that don't matter no more when you get older. There's a one decorative element right here in the middle that was just like not screwed in from the other side. So I left it there and I'm going to paint over it and I may uh, if it doesn't wax real good with the black or whatever, I may come back in with a little bit of black paint or whatever in the end and kind of dry brush over it to make it um, show real good. Still kind of dry, so I'm back and forth, back and forth. So now I'm gonna worry about my brush strokes and go beginning to end and back. Make sure there's no drips, get the brush strokes real good. Look up next to this thing, make sure it didn't catch any extra paint. Get in these creases. This is no fancy schmancy technique. This is something that absolutely anybody can do. And you can change the look of your furniture piece today. missed it because I don't want to overwater it like I did the top but it's dragging so I'm gonna put a little bit on there the one thing my friend Mary taught me I think I've talked about this before Mary's uh, like a wall painter she spent probably 30 years of her life painting, like out at Fort Polk and things like that, and she paints houses and stuff, is always work wet to dry, never dry to wet. And I'm the world's worst at um, coming back here to the other end and coming toward my wet. So what that means is I'm supposed to go right here and always be going this direction not do a little bit there, then come over here and come back, which you probably see me do all the time. So I guess you can survive it if you do. But the, that was the biggest tip Mary gave me whenever I first started painting, probably 15 years ago, was always paint wet to dry. Here I go again, dry to wet, dry to wet. But I'm not doing a big surface, so it's going to be okay. Don't kill us to break the rules now and then. Okay, check my brush strokes. I'm definitely going to be putting on a second coat anyway, so checking all my brush strokes. But I mean, some areas where it's a little bit lighter, I'm not stressing out over them because it's going to have a second coat in a minute anyway. Here 
this is another good thing whenever you're way down here on the floor you can see that I missed the underneath there a little bit. And here I am going dry to wet again. So, guess it don't kill you if you do. Hope Mary ain't, ain't watching. She'll say, I tried to kill that girl. It's definitely blue, and I'm not minding it so far. Such a nice day outside. Eric finished all the corner posts to the fence, so now we have to go get all the wood posts to go in between. I'm anxious. We have uh, we bought one cow from one friend of ours that's pregnant, a heifer that's pregnant, and. Uh, so she's, apparently looks like she's going to pop any day now. So we have to be ready for her. And then, I guess he just went on a cow buying spree. All right, y'all gonna see me lay down because if I don't get my eyes up close to this, um, I'm not gonna be able to see it. Uh, and one of our neighbors had a black Angus that had a calf and it's, uh, what do you call it? It's a boy cow. I can't think of the word. It's a bull. It's a baby bull. And as if we needed a baby bull, but we are wanting to raise Black Angus, so it's going to be nice to have that one. And it's about a month old. It's still on its mama, so it can wait a little while on us. And the other one, hopefully, because we've never, uh, you know, been there to help a cow give birth. Hopefully, um, hopefully the other one has, is born before we pick him up. But we, hopefully he's going to finish that, uh, that fence within the next week or so. He got a new job, yay, out on Fort Polk working civil service. And that means he can add his military service to the time at the civil service job and so he has eight years army so we can add that together and in 12 years have a you know a retirement income other than depending on social security and 401k and all that kind of stuff so i'm so thankful and grateful and blessed and all that kind of stuff so we are definitely happy about that and he starts that job on the 19th some type of, we don't even know exactly what it's going to be doing. It's just a top security thing that, um, and they haven't told us that part yet. So hopefully it's something he enjoys. So he spent many years doing a job he didn't enjoy. This is so therapeutic. My dream is that everybody who's new and doubting their self and coming on here going, oh, I kind of want to redo my bedroom. What can I do? Might see a little bit of this, and then next thing you know, they're going to love painting as much as I do and start transforming things right and left. I need to do, for my store, the artisan market at Get Healthy, I need to do what's called smalls. I need to do more small things to put in there because there's so much furniture everywhere there, and there's nothing to sit on it and make it pretty because I don't want to, or look pretty because I don't want to just uh, have stuff over there for, you know, to like make the little vignettes and then not have it be stuff that's for sale. So I need to, I need to go to Amy's attic and Manny, who is, uh, her building's being sold, and she's decided to retire from there and close in. And I went and did that field trip from there before, and I loved it so much. I think that's what I need to do. Maybe my friend Kay and I can run to Manny before Amy closes and see if I can find some smalls to paint. 
and uh, you know, to sort of decorate around on top of the furniture, make it look pretty and they sell faster if you got them all decorated up. I know y'all can't see the area that I'm painting right now, but I can't grab, well, I could probably grab this leg and pull it around a little. I'm rolling on a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a bedspread thing, whatever you call that. Like a, you put a duvet cover over it. What's the word for that? This menopause brain's gonna drive me crazy. Not like as if I hadn't went through menopause many years ago, but I'm still gonna blame it on that. Hormone brain. Um, comforter, got a, this comforter because I didn't have drop cloth here. And you still gotta protect the floor, so this is a comforter we weren't using. And now it's a drop cloth. You gotta be careful with what you have around our house, because next thing you know, I just, I love dish rags. I love dish rags. I don't know why I love them so much, but I love having pretty dish rags. And I just bought myself a new set before Christmas so I could have them hanging on my stove handle when everybody came over for Christmas. And I just looked and saw it out in Eric's side by side yesterday when he was helping me carry stuff down to the road for to do the pictures of that piece that I did yesterday. And he's using it for a sweat rag outside in his dang side by side. I'm like, man, that's my pretty red, all ruffled and fancied up dish rag. He has got to know that ain't supposed to be for sweat. But then I'm in here on the comforter painting, so <laughs> I, this apple didn't fall far from that tree, I reckon. I put, um, just to start out to see how it would go, I put the small, the small containers, the eight ounce containers, of the DIY paint and the Dixie Belle paint on my Etsy store last night. And, you know, I can ship faster sometimes than a big warehouse. But the thing is, shipping's so dang high. But anyway, so I, I now have uh, the Dixie Belle paint and the DIY paint in uh, my Etsy store. which is Artisan Market. Artisan Market, uh, what? Artisan Market something. Um, not a good salesperson here. I do have, though I do want to mention, I have the, our February classes out. I spent all the weeks of January um, painting and doing a, a cool technique where I put four layers of a, a DIY clay-based paint and scratched some on and off, applied some with a putty knife and all kinds of things and then sanded off with all kinds of different sanding techniques and then waxing and finishing techniques. And I have, I think, 13 videos and, uh, that I made for that process. And it's uh, 10 bucks for the class. So there's, you know, it's nothing that's going to break the bank. So if you see the picture of the like the teal piece that I did yesterday, and you would like to learn to do that technique, it's 10 bucks to get in that uh, private Facebook group and learn that finish. It's all done right here in my living room, just like this. Ten bucks isn't a lot of money. I didn't want to do, you know, I have painting friends that charge $159 a class and things like that. Well, you know, some people just can't afford $159 a class or $129 a class. Or I've got a friend doing a class, um, a pop-up class that's like $47 or something like that. And that's awesome. Um, y'all can't always spend this time here with me for free 
And if you want that uh, beginning to end 13 videos worth of classes, it's 10 bucks. That's if enough people buy it um, and join it, then it will help me pay for some of the paint supplies, materials, and education and things that I do to learn it. Because you can only stay on Facebook Live for so long, you know what I mean? You can't do a, a beginning to end uh, project on Facebook Live. There's just not enough hours of Facebook Live for that. Hey, Audrey, thanks for joining me. Trying to figure out how to, how to get it around without getting blue all over my fingers. Get to the other side, crawling through the living room without y'all seeing my honey. Get up. Come around this way. I'm not doing the back on this piece. Um, it has that like press board kind of stuff that they put on the back of furniture nowadays on the back and that's not meant to be painted so I'm not going to paint it. Let's see if you can see that. <laughs> There's a delay so whenever I pick up the tablet to look it's still uh there you go you can see it. Um it's still moving. So Audrey, this was uh, um, one of those pieces that has the, you know, the sort of slick uh, finish on them that like you never have to really duck clean or anything because the dust comes off so easy that they put on furniture nowadays. So I had to use, or I felt like I needed to use a primer because it was such a slick surface. So I mixed, uh, I took the hardware off, I cleaned it with uh, TSP, um, and then I mixed some aubergine because that was the darkest color I had here, uh, which is like a eggplanty color with the white primer, the slick stick. Uh, which is the Dixie Belle thing, and it makes paint stick to slick surfaces. That's pretty cool, the name Slick Stick. Um, anyway, so I mixed that so that my primer wouldn't be completely white because white is so hard to cover. You would think it would be easy to cover, but it's not. It's actually the hardest of the colors to get the true color you're looking for when you're painting over it. So I tinted my primer with a darker color. I got a lot of water on here again. Do this to get some of that off my brush. Um, and then I let that dry. And now we're just hanging out with, and doing this uh, cobalt blue from Dixie Belle, which is almost like a royal. It's, it's a very bright blue, but I'm gonna use a, um, a black wax over it and kind of tone it down and I'm gonna paint the hardware. I've got it right here. I'm gonna paint the hardware, just spray paint it black. And I think it'll look nice in the end. And if not, it's paint, I'll paint it again. That's the good thing. And that's what, you know, with people who are afraid to get started that they're gonna mess something up or get in over their head or whatever, I say just start it because it's just paint. If it looks ugly, paint it again. If you don't like the color afterward, paint it again. And if you still don't like it, well, make a bonfire. Get you another piece of furniture and paint again. You can always start on something you don't love. You know what I mean? Like get a, you've got, everybody's got to have a side table or an end table or something at their house that they don't like. And if you don't have anything like that, you can almost always find one at the flea market or on Facebook Marketplace for $10. So say you go buy yourself one for $10 because you don't want to mess up your good one. And uh, go and get yourself some uh, paint. I like the Dixie Belle because normally it doesn't need a primer. Um, 
It probably wouldn't have needed a primer today on this either, but the surface was really slick and they make the slick stick, so I figured why not. And uh, just make sure your surface is clean. That's the most important thing. Using the uh, Dixie Bell White Lightning or, or TSP, which is trisodium phosphate, is like a strong detergent where it really gets all any of the old like furniture polish and all that kind of stuff off of there. Do that to it. And uh, I'm going to get this top of this, the back piece here, not the whole back, just this little ledge. And anyway, then just get you some Dixie Bell or DIY, whatever you want to use. And I would recommend starting with the Dixie Bell on your very first piece, unless you already are comfortable with painting and you just want to try new techniques and new things, then get the DIY because it does so many different things than the other paints do. But it's a little bit intimidating in the beginning um, to learn to use, but I do have tons of videos and that's what my, my February $10 class was using DIY and, and doing uh, sanding and wet distressing and uh, layering and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's what that class was about. But anyway, if you get a piece off, off of Marketplace or whatever, pay 10 bucks for it and uh, pick out a paint color you like and just get you a paintbrush. If you don't have a good paintbrush, I like to use a good paintbrush personally. If you don't have one, get a chip brush. You can get them for, you know, under a dollar at Lowe's or wherever and just know that it's not going to have it. It's going to have more brush strokes than when you have a good brush. My first good brush I bought at Sherwin-Williams, and now they've sold out rights, I think, to Lowe's, but it's called Purdy, P-U-R-D-Y. That's a very good brand. Um, they're still not as good as these brushes, but it's way better than a chip brush. Um, get you one of them, best, you know, whatever's the best you can afford without making yourself uncomfortable and feeling like you're wasting money. Get your paint, and, and get... Get the Mr. Bottle. I, I do recommend getting the Mr. Bottle. That was life-changing for me. Um, if you don't want to get the Mr. Bottle at first, just have you a bowl of water nearby and just barely dip the tip of your brush in it. I mean like an eighth of an inch ever so often to, to keep the bristles damp and to keep the paint running smooth so you don't get any drag. Like when it's too dry, you'll feel your brush dragging a little bit. That just gives you wrist fatigue and makes your finish not look as smooth. So keep keep the tip of your brush wet, however you do it. And then just remember to keep all your brush strokes going in the same direction and look for runs. Um, and keep up with, you know, keep up with the runs and oh, keep up with the runs. You know, keep looking for that to make sure you don't get any of those because you, you know, you got a hassle if you got to come back and deal with that later. But so it just do a little bit at a time and then I don't know how long I've been on here 20 minutes or something like that and nearly this whole piece is just about done and that's with me laying on the floor and jacking around talking a lot so you can be finished then if you don't like it and you've got it off the marketplace like that and you don't like it throw it away and never tell anybody you ever did it paint over it again go get another color paint over it again um, just keep practicing. Pra save that save that little table for practice techniques in case you want to blend or you want to decoupage or whatever. You can do it, just go over and over and over it again until you find what it is you want to do on your bedroom furniture, your living room furniture, whatever you want to do. I redid our whole guest bedroom furniture. The old videos are, I'm sure, on here for that because I did a lot of lives for it. And I took them from I took it from black to a cream color with a, what do you call it a, like a brown wax the Dixie Belle brown wax and um, then I put uh, Prima transfers on it of flowers and and I think it's beautiful I think it looks uh, it doesn't even look like the same bedroom furniture at all. Ended up painting the whole bedroom and getting new curtains and everything after that. And it's like a total new room in our house. It is, it's not like anything like it was before. And it's so feminine and 
the, the room was like a forest green with black furniture before, and now it's a, a beautiful teal color called Peacock Plume from Sherwin-Williams. And uh, it has, it used to have, uh, what do you call it, cedar trim from a cedar tree from that I used to climb when I was a kid, actually. And uh, now we've painted that a cream color. I'm gonna miss this lightly. Um, but here I missed a run earlier. And that's from the primer. There we go. So if you miss a run from your primer, you can just go right back over it. I don't know where my, looks like somebody else commented, but I can't um, see it. I can't tell if it's text or comments up there. Anyway, so then you can always just use that as your project piece and do it again and again, but, or just suck it up buttercup, by golly, bring out the, your dresser or the nightstand and hop to it because it's not difficult at all. And then you can learn more and more techniques. And I, I think, I, I, well, I know, I think, painting for probably saving my life because I have blood pressure issues and I, I'm very sort of high strung and worried and feeling like I needed to be working and doing stuff all the time and this is so peaceful and so calming and so relaxing that it lowers my blood pressure. There's not a doubt in my mind that painting is saving my life. Okay, I gotta do the lay down thing again because I wanna get up under here and I can't see it if I don't. It's not gonna take long, like probably the top's already dry, but I'm gonna go, I hear my husband outside, I'm gonna go say hey, I think my grandson's coming over. I'm gonna be excited to see him. Probably gonna take a break and give this maybe at least 30 or 40 more minutes and then uh, come back with the second coat. And then I'll probably give that at least two hours. And then I'll uh, come back with the wax. And then I'll give that overnight. But you still need to, you know, the paint takes probably this paint that has the Dixie Belle with a little bit of a, an acrylic in it to help it uh, you know, not have to have a top coat, probably cures in about two weeks totally, to where, you know, for the first couple of weeks after you paint something, that's important to remember too, is, is don't paint something today and then you touch it and it feels dry and then you go bring it back in your bedroom and sit your lamp down on it. Your lamp is probably going to stick and leave a, an indentation on there because just because it dry, it's dry doesn't mean it's cured. So, when the paint has a little bit of an acrylic base and stuff like this one does, um, give it a couple of weeks before you sit something on it. You know, anything heavy anyways. I mean, you could probably put a doily on it or something or something light, but don't, don't put any, you know, anything heavy on it for a couple of weeks. With the DIY paint, you know, it takes about a month to cure and then it's, you know, then it's as hard as, um, you know, stucco, like concrete. And you're good forever. Uh, but anyway, so I'm gonna give this a little while, then I'm gonna come in and put another coat on it, and then I'm gonna wax it, and I'm gonna be so excited about it. I may take all that hardware with me outside so I don't have to feel guilty about leaving my project and going outside and uh, spray paint that, because I think he had some black paint that I could probably rip off and not have to go buy my own. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go wrap this brush in plastic wrap because I'm coming back to do another coat in a little while rather than um, rather than go in there and wash it. I surely can't leave it in here like this because if it dry, I don't want to put it in water and then have to deal with too much water being in my brush. 
definitely can't lave it down there like this because it'll get hard. And once you, you know, invest it in a brush, you don't want to waste your money on that uh, by ruining it. And what I will, after I get the second coat everywhere, I'll also pull these drawers out a little bit and get all the sides and all around those edges and the areas that I didn't get to because I did this part with it closed. And I'll leave those drawers open for that to dry, um, which will probably just take one coat because those are areas that really are not going to be seen. And uh, then after all of that dries, I'll wax it. But um, anyway, I'm going to wrap this in plastic wrap. You can put it in a Ziploc. You can do whatever will protect it and keep it moist. If it's gonna, if I was going to not work on this until tomorrow, if I go outside and there's a ton of fun going on out there. Um, I would come back in and put this in the refrigerator. And what's the spray? Audrey, it's it's a, a Mr. Bottle. I'll put a link for it in there if you want. You can get them like at Sally Beauty or whatever too. Or uh, get them on Amazon. I'll put an Amazon link. We sell them at our store. But it's just, you fill it up with water. It's got a little bag in there. Like, like disposable diaper, not diapers, disposable bottles are. Um, baby bottles. <laughs> but anyways, you just fill it up. You can fill it up with tinted water if you were working on a finish like that. But that's not, you know, not what we're doing with this piece. But um, it's just filled up with water. And you don't want like that one you can get in the garden center because it's going to put a very solid, big old stream of water on there and ruin your finish. This barely, barely, I don't know if you can see if I put it up this close. Let me see. It barely, barely missed out any water. And that is just enough to you know help you keeping your paint glide and all that so i'm going to wrap this in plastic wrap and put it in the fridge if i'm going to be more than a couple of hours but i am doubt i will but anyway i appreciate y'all joining me and if you have any questions just put them underneath it i'll come back hey sandra uh and i'll come back and answer them thanks bye and show me a picture of what you're painting i'd love to see it bye